while a large percentage of the human population fears snakes, that's not the case within the animal kingdom. Snakes are prey for a large number of animals. Hawks, eagles, honey badgers, and many more hunt snakes as a source of food. Some snake species even hunt other snakes. For this reason, many snakes must learn how to defend themselves. Essentially, anything goes in this regard, and some snakes will do whatever it takes to not only survive a conflict, but more importantly, avoid one entirely. In this material, we'll take a brief look at which predators kill snakes, and then detail 10 ways snakes defend themselves from conflict and attack. Snakes have a bag of defensive tricks, but which animals are they taking these postures against? Let's take a quick crash course look at the subject. In no particular order, birds, hawks, falcons, eagles, certain owls, etc. will hunt for snakes. Cats, bobcats, and even some domestic cats will catch and kill a snake and think nothing of it. The mongoose, arguably the biggest animal threat to most any snake on the planet. Honey badgers, it is common for honey badgers to kill and eat snakes on a regular basis. Alligators and caimans, although not part of their usual diet, both have been known to kill snakes. And finally, humans. We are the worst offenders, whether it's out of sport, fear, curiosity, boredom, intimidation, or the desire for financial profit, many humans will kill a snake on sight. The way snakes hide from predators is often species-specific. Not every snake responds the same way to a threat. Let's take a closer look at this topic by exploring 10 ways that snakes hide and defend themselves from predators. Number one is camouflage. This is probably the one that most people would think of right off the bat. Blend into the fold. Camo is the same way some snakes will choose to attack. So it only seems natural that some would also use this exact same method to hide from a potential attack. I don't have to defend myself if you can't see me. Some snakes simply have it good in this regard. Coloration that enables them to blend right in with their environment. The colors of brown, black, green, and tan are best suited for this line of defense. So the question is how? Just because you're a green snake doesn't always mean you can just fit right in next to a green plant. Or does it? Is there an art to it? Sidewinder rattlesnakes, for example, reside in desert regions within the southwestern portion of the United States and Mexico. They are creamy brown in color, therefore they can blend right in with the sand. These snakes can also bury themselves under sand in order to escape predators. What about the rough green snake? They're good at hiding in green grass, which just happens to be their natural habitat. Hiding where you live is certainly better than being forced to take cover in an uncommon location. Rough green snakes can also scale trees and hide in leaves. The green tree python. Green and tree give it all away. These snakes are perfectly camoed by the color of their environment. And finally, the copperhead, tan and brown. These snakes can fit right in against the backdrop of wooded areas, often hiding in plain sight on the ground, in and amongst the dirt and fallen leaves. The second way that some snakes defend themselves is through means of burrowing. The hognose snake is a good example. Dig a hole, hide under brush, get under the dirt. That's the goal of defense. While most snakes don't burrow, some can dig just a bit while also taking advantage of ready-built burrows that have been created by rodents and other animals. If a snake can see, hear, and or smell a threat coming, some will simply escape under the surface. The third means of defense is fleeing. When it comes to camo and hiding, sometimes that just doesn't work, and the only measure next is to flee. Snakes will often move away as fast as possible in order to escape danger. While this would seem like an obvious way to escape, not every snake uses this option, or is able to use this option. The fourth method of defense is aposematism. This is the opposite of camouflage. Rather than attempting to blend in with the current surroundings, some snakes that are bright shades of red, yellow, and or orange will show themselves as a warning. They avoid confrontation by getting noticed. Venomous coral snakes often use this method of intimidation. 
Some non-venomous snakes take on the method of mimicking venomous snakes as a way to avoid trouble. This method can make predators think twice before they make any subtle moves. It also makes them take a second look at who or what they're dealing with. For some snakes, it's all about effort. For others, it's all about their natural appearance. Here are a few examples. Some species of king snakes have red, yellow, and black bands. These mimic venomous coral snakes. This can potentially stop animals and humans alike from becoming aggressive. While African egg snakes are harmless, they do resemble saw-scaled vipers. Sharing the same geographical region, these snakes are known to rub their scales together in an effort to recreate a viper sound. How about smooth snakes? These snakes can flatten their heads when they're threatened. This causes their heads to appear triangular, mimicking that of rattlesnakes. Our final example of mimicry comes from the rat snake. With the ability to vibrate their tails in grassy areas, they can recreate the sound of a rattlesnake. This can keep predators at bay, especially humans. The next means of defense involves warning signals. This is not unlike mimicry in many respects. Some examples of warning signals can include hissing, rattling, taking on a larger appearance, the formation of an intimidating hood, releasing a foul odor, and playing dead. The hognose snake has this particular trait. Method number seven is what is known as flicker fusion. This is a defense that is often displayed by banded snakes, horizontally striped. The banded water snake, coral snake, and banded crate snakes are examples. Flicker fusion involves quick movements. It can create somewhat of a visual illusion known as motion blur. Predators can lose track of a snake because of the effect that flicker fusion creates. The next line of defense is achieved through intimidation pretending to strike. If a predator is too close and the snake on the defensive end has no legitimate options available, it will pose a visual threat. Fake strike. This is used as a scare tactic more than anything else. It's designed to put the predator on the defensive. This often works against humans. This faux striking posture is often accompanied by hissing, hooding, and the other warning signals that were noted earlier in this material. Similar to pretend striking, venom spitting can be used as a defense. The spitting cobra often uses this method. While venom spitting won't always harm a predator, the act alone can give the predator pause and possibly deter it from attacking. If venom gets in the eyes of a predator, it can blind them. The final defensive method that we'll cover is biting. This is obviously the last plan in the book, usually done if all other methods have either failed or are not reasonable options. Although it would be easy to assume that a venomous snake would want to bite a predator, this is not usually the case. Most snakes, regardless of species and venomous qualities, will attempt to avoid a confrontation if possible, and only bite if they feel their life is at risk. Venom is a valuable resource, and a snake would never want to waste it for any other reason. Snakes know that with any form of biting, the fight is on. This will place the snake in the line of fire, which can be dangerous, even for a highly venomous snake. They might kill the predator, but not before they are also killed in the skirmish. Although our listing did conclude on a bit of a jarring note, this is the way of life for snakes. Not all defense methods are the same, but the core objective is quite clear. Avoid gauging a predator at all cost. That is the name of the game. While our video coverage regarding this topic has come to a close, if you would like to know more on this subject matter, please visit us at snakesforpets.com. There you will find an in-depth article on this topic. If you're currently viewing this video off-site, we encourage you to click the initial link in the description box that is available to you. Said link will take you to the article in question. And until our paths cross again, we genuinely thank you for viewing this content. We hope you found it helpful and informative. We wish you a wonderful day. All the best to you and yours, and we'll talk to you later.